pale ambapo wanakaa kitu ya kwanza hatujafikisha huduma za kutosha wengine hawana stima wengine teknolojia hawana ya kisasa na pia huyu mkulima analipa ushuru kwa kile kitu ambacho ananunua hii fataleza ambayo tunasema ni subsidized hatuioni mali iko kuna madawa kwa parachichi ambazo zinafaa kutumika ndio tuweze kuiangalia mwanzangu aliyekuwa hapa mbele yangu amesema kuwa kuna zile madawa za kuangalia black spots na vitu kama hizo hizo madawa pia ni beikali na kwa hivyo inamaanisha nini inamaanisha huyu mkulima tukimkata ushuru tunamuumiza manake hata saa hii ya extension services serikali haipeani ambacho ni kazi ya county lakini county hawaangalii mkulima kazi yao ni kuangalia barabara ile mwana atapata pesa kwa mfuko amalizane nayo ni, ni, ni tuna uzuni sana kwa hiyo alafu uh, kitu kingine ambayo nduko ndugu ame alikuwa ameongea hapa ni kuhusu rejection of produce personally mimi ni mkulima na pia mimi ni exporter na ningependa kusema kitu moja kuhusu rejection of produce ni pande ya serikali imetuangusha kwa nini hizi extension services zinafaa kuwa zina piano kwa mkulima huyu mkulima aweze kufunzwa kuanzia mwanzo mpaka mwisho hiyo avocado na ipalilia namna gani unafaa uiangalie vipi na ni mda gani unafaa kukana hiyo avocado kabla ukate kwa mti maana exporters wengine ambao wako hapa watakwambia kwa avocado inafaa kuwa inakaa mwezi sita kabla iweze kutolewa kwa mti lakini wakulima wengi hawajui hivyo inafika mwezi nne anakata anaenda nayo na pia madam Christine Chesaro ako, ako hapa anaweza kukusaidia kwa hapo kwa mambo ya extension na ana, ana team nzuri itamsaidia na pia the same time hana watu wa kutosha wa kufanya kazi sasa hii kwa exporters wanafaa kwa kile consignment kabla yende lazima wafanye kitu inaitwa inspection na hii inspection inafanywa na HCDA na inafanywa na KFIS unapata mara KFIS wanakuambia hawana magari HCDA pia hawana watu wa kutosha wa kufanya hiyo kazi kuna shida na the same time hii mzigo kwa port ina wakati ya kuingia sasa huyu inspector kwa sababu ya serikali imetufail kwa pande moja, hii mzigo yangu ya milioni tatu itawachwa na huyu mkulima atakosa kulipwa itakuwa namna gani? So kwa hivyo tunaomba sana mtuweze mtuweze kutuangalia kwa pande hiyo. Na pia your excellency hii sekta ya avocado imeza kuajiri vijana wengi sana. We will we will discourage the young people to to indulge in agriculture if we impose taxes on agriculture. Agriculture is the backbone of this country. If we impose taxes, and yet, especially in the avocado industry, we don't have incentives that uh, support, agri uh, support avocados. Um, so I would urge, as we've said, the elephant of this room is the issue of taxation. Yes, we need to develop our country ourselves, so we need to have taxes yes as a country to be taxed and to increase the tax base but let exempt the agricultural produce because at the end of the day agriculture is an SDG that uh, eradicates poverty um, improves health um, provides food and economically sustains people so I would urge that we exempt all agricultural produce from the from the taxes secondly i'm an aggregator as a young person as a young person um uh, being born in a very very humble background i uh, and i i love agriculture i love avocado so the moment the way i entered this industry I've been in this industry for three years only. The, the way I entered this avocado is because there was an avenue to be an aggregator. So my fellow big farmers and large-scale farmers, let's not um, point this aggregation role of the industry as brokerage. Because sincerely speaking, me, I'm doing business in this industry. I pay the farmers. I sell my fruits to the exporters and get, I get my profit from that. So um, I stand here very heartbroken that we are labeled as the wrong people, or wrongdoers of this industry. We play key roles. We, we caution the small scale farmers from, 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 from the challenges that this industry has. Recently, 
um, there was shortage of containers. I, as an aggregator, I had bought fruits from a farmer. I had paid the farmer. Taking my produce to the exports, uh, to the exporter, I'm told there's shortage of, ex of containers. Have I not cautioned the, the farmer from the, the challenge that we've experienced in an industry? Have I not? I have. So, us as aggregators, we caution the young and small-scale farmers from the challenges that this industry goes through. We take, we take the, re, re, the biggest risk in this industry. The exporters they are in will tell you they are already paying their taxes. They are submitting their returns. They are doing everything. What is disrupting us is that we are not able at the moment to receive produce from farmers for two reasons. One, the farmers need to give the exporters and the aggregators their PIN certificate, their PIN numbers. Mr. President, I want to, Deputy President, I want to say this, that the farmers have been told, if you give out your PIN, your land is being sold. For that reason, we are not able to get produce to fill containers, and our produce is stuck in the farms. This needs to be clarified. Number two, we deliberately reached out to some of the farmers, and one of them is Faith, able to explain to you, perhaps in the mother tongue, in a language you can understand, that this business is getting frustrated by virtue of the implementation of the Finance Act, particularly number 23, clause 23A. We are requesting this way, that we put on hold suspend the implementation of that specific clause, praying that the members of parliament here present make true their request of amending that legal provision based on the legal provision through the parliament framework. If we get that, then we're in business. She has mentioned we have 158, 57 billion, we got this year. We are in danger. Deputy President, our competitors who are our neighbors are taking advantage every day of every single blunder we do. And once they get to that market, we lose the market. Our exports for beans and peas have gone down instead of increasing. The only export that we are currently seeing an upward trend is avocado. We do not want to go that direction. We want to do anything humanly possible to support the country in ensuring this goes high. To Madam Sears, we have a challenge when it comes to market, and I'm happy Christine is here, and Sears, Chalugui here. We do not have market budget for market access. Piers, I'm sure you know the battle we had to go to Berlin this year. We did not give Christine peace. If we are not in the marketplace, we are not going to sell anything. The rest of the things we are doing here is a PR exercise. These exporters need to get to Berlin every February. We are going to May this year. Christine does not have a budget. And then when we go to the market, we have a kiosk in the name of a Kenyan stand. We have an embassy that has not been empowered. They can't do anything apart from talking to us. Out of 158, 57 billion we gave government through HCD. Government has given us zero in return to develop the industry. Zero. We're not asking for too much. If you give us 1%, if you give us 2%, or you give us 3% of that money and say, please, go back and develop the industry, we can sit here one year down the line and we can demo demonstrate to you that this industry works. They have mentioned the issues of taxes. Beyond other things, we have a challenge. We are, these exporters are not getting tax refunds. Our biggest problem is 20th, which is tomorrow. We need an answer. Tomorrow, all these exporters must submit their returns to carry. If they don't, everything they have spent is going to be considered profit and not an expense. So an executive order, whatever consultation needs to happen, needs to happen like yesterday. And that is why we're saying we're glad that this meeting is here. And we are unable to move. Our industry is actually supported by development partners. The government of Kenya has less than 
3% of the budget allocated to agriculture. You can check. Against your own protocol of 10% allocation to the agriculture in the sector. Out of that, less than three, about 2.5%, out of that, HCD has to come back to us for us to buy space, to get space. If we were involved, someone would have noticed that if this thing caters across the whole agricultural produce, there might be a problem here. The lack of involvement is bringing us down, is bringing us back to the drawing board. Um, the second one is during bilateral trade agreements, negotiations, things are decided on the table where stakeholders are not involved. Such things affect us. For example, we get a market for China, Your Excellency, but then it is for frozen product. We are not able to do frozen product. We go back to the drawing board. We get a market for China, but it is a market for fruit that needs to be fumigated. The fumigation process affects the quality of the fruit. Again, we go back to involvement of stakeholders in policy making decisions. Uh, the last but not least, HCD and AFA, they have a board, uh, I don't know, HCD, we would like to be in their board so that when they are discussing issues that affect avocado, then we can give input to avoid going back and forth. The opening and closing of the season, for example, it is a good thing. We appreciate the effort being made to bring our quality at par with the industry. However, if you close our avocado export season from September all the way until March, and then open it when Peru is starting, really, we cannot offer good prices because we cannot also sell at good prices. If we were consulted as to when to open or close, or even whether it is necessary to open and close, we, we avoid this whole debacle of going back and forth. Dry matters, you know we have right now the regulation to have a dry matter of 24. Such issues can be addressed before they become policy, and we can give our input that affects the business directly, it affects the prices we offer, it affects us. But it's because we are not involved in policy making, we are not involved in the decision making, and brings us back to this point. Ami na ito wa mnyu wanjoi, wanyakiti ya wakulima na manunuaji parachichi katika hii nchi yetu ya Kenya. Siku ya leo imekuwa siku ya mana, ile kirio tumekuwa tukiria kutoka mwaka jana mwezi ya kumi, mpaka mwezi hii sasa diyo tumianza kuwana mwerekeo. Mana serekali imekubali tukai chini tuonge, na diyo tuweze kuendea na, na ukulima wa parachichi. Ile mao bitu tunaendelea kuomba tumeona hii sasa imeanza kusikiliza sana na kesho tuko na mkutano mwingine. Ile kitu tunastahili kufanya ni kusimama imara. Tusije tukabadilika. Na yale ya ukweli yatajwe na yaendelee maana tunasema na tunairudia ya kwamba mkulima ndio mtu wa maana katika Kenya hii. Na tukialipu eneo ya ukulima inamaanisha economy ya country mzima imeharibika. Maombi yetu ni kama kuendelea vile tumekubaliana ikifika siku ya kesho yale tutakayoongea yale ni maneno ya kufaa. That the people who come and claim refunds, people who pay tax, the big people, they normally say that some of the people who are supplying them with avocados were not tax registered, so they can't be able to trace. And I think that was the intention. Another thing I wanted to clarify is that according to the Tax Act, anyone earning less than 5 million shillings a year was not to be part, shouldn't be part of that regime. Number two, the people we tax even salaried start from 24,000 shillings. So anyone earning that money when you multiply by 12 should not be paying any tax. And I think one of the things that we'll look at when you're going into this finance act was you're going into the finance bill cycle is this clarity so that it is in black and white. We cannot allow our farmers to be taxed and we cannot allow the people we are trying to support as a government to be the ones who are crying over tax. So leave it to us. I don't think it's about reading. I think it's about interpretation and what happened when it went to the relevant authorities, including KRA. Thank you and God bless you. Thank you so much. Kuhusu kero ambayo wakulima wa maparachichi ya wakando wa mekua kipitia, ili tuweze kuongea sana sana kwa sababu hii metokea kwa sababu ya kifungu cha finance bill kipengee cha kipengee cha 23 ambayo inasema kwamba wakulima wote walikuwa nafaa kusanjiliwa kupitia items lakini ilipokuja kueleweka kufika kwa KRA 
ikawa sasa hiyo items ilikuwa jia ya kuokota kondi kutoka kwa wakulima wa maparachichi ikawa kero na wakati naimbo rais alisikia ile kero akatuita sisi zote mimi niko hapa kama mwenyekiti wa kamati ya kulima uvuvi mifuko na uchumi samawati na ndio maana niko hapa siku ya leo na tumeongea tumekuwa na wakulima wale wenye viwanda na wale pia wanauza maparachichi kwenda soko la nje tumekuwa na waziri wote wa, wa, mawaziri wote ambao wanahusika kuanzia katibu wa kudumu katika wizara ya kilimo tumekuwa na waziri mbeka miano kwa sababu ya ya uuzaji ama, ama trade na tumekuwa pia na bwana Chergui waziri kwa sababu ya vyama vya ushirika ninataka kusema ya kwamba eh, naimbo rais amesema kwamba kuwe na kamati ambayo itaanza kukaa kuanzia kesho ili tuweze kutafuta jawambu la, la, la hiyo kero, kero wakulima waweze kuendelea kuuza maparachichi yao kwa sasa imetonjitokeza ya kwamba kwa sababu wakulima wengi wakitishwa hizo e, stakambadhi wakitishwa pin wakitishwa indi wengi sana hawanja ridhishwa na jambo hilo na wengi hawajaelewa kwa hivyo tumesema ni vizuri kuondoa hilo kelo kwa sasa ili wakulima waweze kufaindika niseme ni jambo la busara kwa sababu wengi hata wabunge waliopitisha ile sheria walikuwa nafikiria ilikuwa ni kwa ajili ya kusajili wakulima peke yake lakini haikuwa hawakuwa hawaku wamejua kwamba pia itatumika kukusanya kondi ya mapato kutoka kwa maparachichi. Kwa hivyo hilo ni jambo la alambusara kufanya kuhakikisha kwamba ile sheria imewekwa kando hata kama ni kidogo kwanza ikitatuliwa kwa sababu wakati finance bill itakuja tena katika mbunge wataweza kusahihisha kwa babu kabisa lakini lazima tutafute ndawa na njawambu la ili neno haraka sana ili wakulima wetu wasiumie wakulima maparachichi. Eh, nataka niseme kwamba miswanda yote ambayo huwa ina ambayo huwa ina inapitishwa si yote ambayo inakuanga na uh, inakuanga kamili mia kwa mia. Lakini lakini mswanda ukipitishwa unjulikane uko na kero ama uko na shida fulani unaweza rudishwa bunge tena ukaweza kurekebishwa. Na kwa hivyo hilo ndio mjanda ambao tuko nao sasa kwamba ile finance bill hata ambayo inakuja sasa iweze kurekebisha ile makosa ambayo ilitokea. Na iseme waziwazi ya kwamba kama ni wale wanauza maparachichi kwenda nje tayari wale wanalipa kondi na wana shida lakini mklima mdogo ile inaitwa kilimo cha msingi primary agriculture ile yako pale chini mashinani huyo anafaa aachanwe naye kwa sababu hata sheria ya mapato inasema kama uwezi pata mshahara wa wa shilingi 2024 na, na ine kwa mwezi ama shilingi milioni tano wewe hujafikia kutozwa ushuru kwa hivyo ni vizuri tu uweze kuoa zile sheria zote mbili na tuziondolee yule mkulima maskini ambaye yako mashinani ili aweze kufaindika nimeweza kukaa pale pia na katibu wa kudumu katika wizara ya kilimo tulikuwa tumekaa chini pale na pia ameongea katika ile kongamano ya kwamba wakulima kupata mbolea ya ruzuku kwa ambaye inafuu bado kuna matatizo kuna kero fulani ziko ya kwanza ni kwamba wanachelewa sana kuleta zile vucha ambazo zinapeanga wakulima wa, wa fertilizer unaweza pata wakati mwingine kuna fertilizer lakini vucha zinapeanga kwa fertilizer upanzi ile fertilizer fertilizer ama mbolea ya ruzuku ya, kufa, ya kupadilia unapata hakuna kwa hivyo wakati wanakuja kutoa zile vucha za ile mbolea ya kupadilia unapata mimea mingi sana ishapita ule wakati wa kuweka kuna faa kuwe miundo msingi ya kidijitali ya kupeana vucha zikatika wakulima iweze kuwekwa sawa sawa na nje bila kuchelewa jambo la pili ni kwamba waweze kutafuta mchanganyiko kutoka kwa wataalamu wa mbolea ili wale wanaonunua mbolea wapewe mbolea kulingana na ile mimea ambayo wanapanda ukienda katika sehemu ya moya wana wana ya mpunga kuna sulfate ammonia kuna TSP sio inatumika katika upanzi wa mahindi ukaangalia ukulima wa makandamia na parachichi ile ile mbolea inatumika sio ile inatumika mahali kingine kokote kwa hivyo ni vizuri waweze kuangalia kwamba pia mbolea ambayo inatolewa katika sehemu fulani ni ya mimea gani kwa sababu wakulima shanji zinjisanjiri kama ni wakulima wa pareto wamejisanjiri wakulima wa mpunga wamejisanjiri wa maparachichi wamejisanjiri ili iweze kufikia wale wakulima kwa muda unaofaa kwa sababu mvua inakujanga kwa wakati wakati 
maalum sio mvua nyeshi kuanzia Januari mpaka Disemba na mkulima anapopitwa na mvua bila kuweka mbolea yake katika zile mimea tayari wakati anafikiwa na mbolea inakuwa kumeharibika kwa hivyo ningeuliza pia wizara isiwe inakumbuka shuka wakati kumekucha